What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Let's Play Aladdin. In the last part, we uh, got ourselves all the way to the final level, talked about a whole bunch of different subjects. Now, here's the thing I'm going to do with, like, some of these mini LPs, where it's a not very long game, and uh, pretty much I can blow through in, like, one sitting if I really wanted to. Uh, I'm going to just talk over the last level. Well, uh, so, uh, here's the thing about, uh, Aladdin here, or, uh, this whole freaking level. This, you know, kind of feels like, you know, we've done this before, we did this in a game called Spawn, and I would be like one of the few, uh, buttheads to say, oh, I played the Spawn game. But, uh, hit, you know, the bottom of the level has, like, fire or something like that coming up. And going down again and again and again. But, uh, you know, the difference between, you know, something like Spawn and, uh, those other games that do this, uh, Spawn, you know, didn't ever have, like, the best controls out there. And, uh, this had, like, you know, really just solid tight controls where if you did fall off, you know, you felt like, oh, that, how the fuck did, uh, you didn't, Go like, go oh, the stupid controls cost me that hit point, or the stupid controls uh, did this or that or whatever. Uh, no, you would look at this. And it's like, yeah, that was my own goof up. Like, yeah, there's on occasion where you would need like so be somewhat exact to uh, ju jump on some of these platforms, but it's an easy enough level. This guy. If you've ever fought this guy the first time around, he's actually pretty tough. But if you have some of the max health upgrades or something like that, uh, he's not so tough because his patterns, you know, he does the same thing again and again and again. He'll either spawn these, he'll swoop down, or he'll throw his low staff there to shoot lightning bolts at you. Now, if you get a high enough jump, uh, uh, you can actually get him while he's swooping. Then, you know, repeat this kind of pattern again and again and again. Until the guy's pretty much dead. And there's hit number two. Yeah, drop those same thunderbolts in the same spots again and again and again. And some of your basic gammies. around. Sometimes it'll put out two. But... Most of the time, it's like one group of enemies. I think I remember when I was little, you know, I think I jumped when he was swooping. And somehow I managed to hit him that way. I have no idea how. And there's hit number four. I think he's got five hits. And I could have easily got killed there. <laughs> so... There's hit number five, and down goes Big Batty. Yeah, I thought low was over right then and there. Apparently not. You just gotta walk a little bit to the left, uh, to the right. I don't know what I was thinking. And stage six cleared. Yeah, I only got one of them. Boo hoo. Final battle. No shite! At least you're not telling me it's not the final battle. Like, you know, just building up the plot to a point where it's like, oh, this is going to be the final battle, and it's actually not. Okay, final fight. The giant snake version of Defar. This guy, you know, at times I would say he's kind of easy, but sometimes you gotta get lucky when it comes to fighting him. Like, if you can get a good bounce off of one of those balls, you can get easy hit there. And the second you hit him... I don't know how I make this guy harder than he actually is. I got, like, one inch away from him. Fuck. I couldn't see where my character was. 
Just a whole flickering effect. There we go. There we go. Just need to get rid of one of those balls. <laughs> I take the hit, I land on him. Come on. Now let's land on him already. There we go. I don't know how every single time I fight like one of these final bosses, you know, I end up with like one HP and uh, before dying. Because the last two times I've played this, I got like one HP away from dying. You have defeated the final boss. Wait a second. <laughs> he immediately strikes you. But you get out with the most powerful being on earth. You're just as powerless as. And I can't read any of that because it's like a ridiculously small screen. He basically says a bunch of really bad guy stuff. And he pretty much tells Genie to uh, turn him into an all powerful Genie for his last wish. And the G's like, okay. Fuck it, why not? He's like, yes! I am the true final boss! You cannot defeat me! I have 9999999 HP. What the freak? When he said all powerful genie, that also means you get trapped inside a lamp and spin in this, you know. I don't know whether he used mode 7 for that or whatever, but that was a cool trick. First time I saw it, it's like, you know, that's really cool. And he's like, Jasmine, I'm sorry. Maybe I lied to you. And those. Why don't you just kiss already? Gene's like, no problem, I'll turn you into. Prince to bypass the law. <laughs> and they're like, I love you too. But I don't want to let some. I don't want you to let me for something or not. So, a deal is a deal. Aladdin releases a uh, genie. And he's like, Yeah, I'm out of here. I don't have to deal with that stupid lamp again. She's <laughs> flying all over the place. Just hang out like a villain. Or chilling like a villain. So that's pretty much the entirety of uh, Aladdin on the Super Nintendo. Sure, there was like other variations. I think this might have also got a report to GBA. I'm not 100% sure on that. But uh, this is probably the best version out of them all. Even though, you know, I have the. Aladdin game on the Sega Genesis, but uh, still, you know, this is definitely a worthwhile game. You can pick it up remotely cheaply. It's like ten to fifteen bucks tops online, I think. So this is a fairly common game, but this, if you want a really tough game that rewards you. When you finish it, I would definitely go pick up the Genesis version. So graphically, you know, it's a really good looking game. I, I personally like the style of uh, the Super Nintendo version more than I like the Sega Genesis version. Just because, uh, you know, uh, there's more plot style stuff to it. Like, sure, the Genesis version looks more like the movie, but the Super Nintendo version, I don't know, kind of, like, feels more along the lines of those uh, Disney kind of kid-friendly looks to it. Audio-wise, uh, 
You know what? I've always liked the audio style of the Super Nintendo. I don't know whether it spawns out more nostalgia from just because it's Super Nintendo than the like Genesis. But it seems a lot cooler on the Super Nintendo than the Sega Genesis. Uh, sound effects are okay, you know, it's par for the course for Super Nintendo. As for gameplay, you know, it's a pretty by books kind of, you know, Super Nintendo platformer game, which the Super Nintendo had tons of good ones. Uh, you had Mario World, you had Metroid, you had uh, Demon's Crest, uh, Super Ghouls and Ghosts, and the list goes on of like just solid platforming games, including Castlevania, and also the Ninja Gaiden trilogy. But it's a solid platforming game. The controls feel right. I didn't really feel like there's too many jumps where I felt like that the controls cost me or the collision detection or whatever cost me. Except for that one section where you saw me keep on dying and dying and dying over and over again. I don't know whether I didn't have the controls down pat or it was a jump I kept missing. But still, overall, really solid game. Beginning to and uh, if you have a Super Nintendo, this is definitely one of the movie games I would definitely recommend wholeheartedly to go pick up. Uh, along with games like... This is probably my most favorite movie-based game I've ever played on the Super Nintendo. I'm probably missing out on a lot of other good ones, but still, this is my personal favorite. And at the end, it tells you how many red jewels you picked up. And they have this nice low the end thing at the end of the game. So uh, that's it for this LP. I hope you enjoyed it. it. You know, this was a different take on the genre for me. So I will see you all in the next LP. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.